John Dickerson, host of Face the Nation, joining me now on CBS Denver and CBSDenver.com. John, tonight the president will basically wave over the border from Florida, tell the people of Alabama to vote for Roy Moore. Now, both men play up their anti-establishment image to voters. Is that working for Moore like it did for candidate Trump? Well, there's every indication that it is. He's faced uh, significant challenges with these stories about uh, sexual assault and of a 14-year-old of a girl. Um, and he's faced members of his own, of the Republican Party senators who he would join if he wins, saying they believe the accusers and they don't believe his denials. Uh, and he's weathered all of that. The polls show him up. You have to take those polls with a huge grain of salt because of all of these swirling developments. Uh, but the polls show that uh, he has recovered um, from being down after those initial stories hit. Uh, he has a, he has supporters who believe him and believe those stories are a plot either uh, from the press or from the establishment in Washington. So he is uh, basically exactly matching the Trump playbook in terms of those uh, the late days of the, the Trump campaign when uh, the Access Hollywood tape uh, came on uh, and and the president was able to weather that. So if Roy Moore is able to uh, make it through all these troubles, it will be. Uh, a lot of parallels to the presidential campaign. John, let's go international for a bit. U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley says recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel could, in her words, bring us closer to peace in the Middle East than ever before. So what is the administration counting on to achieve lasting peace? Well, that's a very good question. There's a bit of a gap there between uh, a move that most foreign policy experts see as um, either incendiary at the worst or just um, not doing much to change the dynamic uh, at the best. Incendiary in that it will inflame the Arab world because this is a uh, looks like the United States is coming down on the side of the Israelis in that negotiation about peace between the Palestinian and the Israelis. Um, and and if, it, if, if there's not violence, as has been predicted, and the State Department is warning um, U.S. Uh, citizens who are in the Middle East, even if there's not violence, there's the question of why do this when you can't get anything for it in return? This was always yep. seen as a bargaining chip. Uh, and so um, I, it's not clear exactly how this is going to lead to a brand new uh, arrangement other than basically the administration saying, look, you've tried everything else, nothing's happened, so let's try this. John, finally, on the domestic side, the president signing a spending bill to keep the government running till December 22nd. Do you think that's enough time for Congress and the White House to hammer out a long term deal? Well, it, it may not be enough time for them to uh, settle all their differences. But one thing I think we can have some, uh, uh, nothing's a certainty, but we do know that everybody wants to go home for the holidays and nobody wants to <laughs> hang a big light on their inability to keep the government funded. So I think even if they can't settle all their differences, what they may very well decide again is what they decided this week, which is to hit the snooze bar one more time, fund the government <laughs> into January and pick up their debates and their disputes in January, um, but not keep everybody in Washington angry about a government shutdown right on the eve of the Christmas holiday. That can gets kicked around a lot back there. John Dickerson, thank you, sir. We'll look forward to seeing you Sunday on Face the Nation. Thanks, Jim.